Hello all, welcome back to Engineering Economy. We are talking about time value of money and in this lecture we will learn how to deal with cash flows which includes the interest rates that vary with time and how to find the present, future or annual equivalent values of such cash flows when the interest rate changes over time. So let's get started. Until now, we assumed that the interest rates are constant throughout the whole uh, periods, all years. But the thing is, usually the interest rates uh, vary with time. Usually these interest rates can change over time. And when we have such changes uh, in the interest rates, usually in order to calculate uh, the present values, future values, or if we want to move the cash flows uh, to forward or backward, we need to move them one period at a time. And during these uh, moments, we need to reflect the interest rate uh, for that single period. So we may want to find P or F uh, over these interest rates that vary over a number of periods n. And we may want to find the present value, future value, or we may want to find uh, the annual equivalent value for these kind of calculations. Let's consider this example. So in this example, uh, as you can see, the interest rate in the first period, in the first year, is 8%. In the second year it is 10, then it's 8 again, then for two years it is 6, and it is 10 in the fifth, in the sixth year. And as you can see, we have these cash flows at years 1, 2, 4, and 6. And we are asked to find the present value. Then how can we find this present value? The thing is, since the interest rates are changing, we need to consider them one by one. So you may assume, you may do the operation like this. Move this one to the first period. Then I want to move this one to the first period, I mean uh, at time zero. But since the interest rates are different, then first I need to move it to the first period with 10% interest rate, and then move it to time zero with 8% interest rate. Again, similar let this one, I need to move it one year, then another year, then another year, and etc. But the thing is, if we do it in this way, we will uh, do a lot of calculations. But instead, what we can do is, we can start from this last one. We can move it forward one period uh, with 10% interest, then move it one period backward, Okay, with 6% interest rate, and then combine that one with this. So since they are at the same time now, and then I can move these two all together to the previous uh, in year three, and then uh, move one year uh, backward, and then combine it with this one, and move all together, and combine it with this one, and move all together to the present time. Okay, so I'm going to use this method, this procedure, to find the present value. So first, in order to find the value of this 2001 year before, I need to multiply that one by P given F, 10% and 1. Okay, then I need to find it uh, one period forward, uh, backward, with 6% interest rate, it means that I need to multiply this value. So let me write in this way. I need to multiply this value by also P given F, then 6% and 1. Okay, now this whole multiplication is the equivalent value of this 2000 at the end of year four. Now for this one, I'm going to add 1000. And this 1000 plus this value is the value at time four. Then I need to shift it 
one period backward by 6% interest rate. So it means that I need to multiply P given F, 6% and 1. And then again I need to shift it 1 backward by multiplying it P given F, 8% and 1. And now this value over here is the time at the end of year 2 and we have additional 2000 here. So I'm going to add this 2000 to this one. And then I need to move everything one period backward, meaning that multiplying it by P given F, 10% and 1. And now here, this value is the t uh, equivalent value at the end of year 1, and we also have 1000 here. So I need to add 1000 to this value. Okay. And then I need to uh, shift this value one period backward by multiplying P given F, 8% and 1. Okay. So this whole formula uh, is the formula. Of course, you don't need to write uh, the formula like this one. You just put the values, plug in the values uh, in these uh, formulations and calculate the equivalent amounts and add them and calculate the equivalent amount here and add this one and calculate the equivalent and you will find the present value. Okay, so this P is equal to this calculation. There's another example here. It says that Shea Simit is a 22 year old senior who used this Stafford loan program. There's a loan program. It says that to borrow 4,000 four years ago. Okay, it says four years ago. And then it, the interest rate was 4.06% per year. Then 5,000 borrowed three years ago with this interest rate. 2,000 at this interest rate uh, two years ago, 6,000 at this interest rate. And the previous year, 7,000 with this interest rate. Now she would like to consolidate her debt into a single 20-year loan with 5% fixed annual interest rate. Okay, so if Ashea makes annual payments starting in one year to repay her total debt, what is the amount of each payment? In solving this question, the first step is to sketch the cash flow diagram. Okay, but it talks about past four years ago, three years ago. So now I'm going to sketch it like this. This is time zero, then one year before, so it will be minus one, two years before, three years before, and four years before. And four years before, she borrowed $4,000, and the interest rate was 4.06%. And three years ago, borrowed 5,000, and the interest rate was 3.42. And two years ago, borrowed 6,000, okay, 6,000 dollars, and the interest rate was 5.23. And 7,000 one year ago with this interest rate. This is time zero and starting from time one up to time 20, she want to pay this amount, all this amount back in equal payment, annual payments. And what should be this annual payment if the interest rate is 5%? The question is this. Okay, we are trying to solve this question. So, what we are going to do is we have these borrowed amounts. We want to make them equal to these payments, economically equivalent to these payments. So some of the students are confused when we are talking about past. So minus one, minus two years and etc. Actually, it is not important that in uh, cash flow diagrams, in finding present, future words and etc. What we do is uh, we 
concentrate on how many periods we are moving forward or backward. The timing, whether it is in the past, in the future, and etc., is only important to identify if we are moving a cash flow forward or backward. Otherwise, we use exactly the same formulas. So the, if the cash flows appeared in the past, the, still we are going to use the same factors and same formulas. Nothing changed. And if you look at this part over here, you can see that these values are increasing at a, linearly. But the thing is, we cannot use the formula for linear gradient series because the interest rates at each period are not the same. Therefore, we need to deal these cash flows one by one. So what I am going to do, again, in order to make these two cash flows equal to each other, I need to select a base year, base period, to compare them with each other. This can be year minus four. This can be year 20. But we need to select a base year for which we will do the less number of calculations. And for that reason, I am going to select time zero as the base year. And what I am going to do, I will move these forward to time zero, and I will move these backward to time zero and make them equal to each other. Okay, so for the first part over here, Again, I am going to do similar to the previous example. I will shift this one period forward and add it to this one, $4,000, okay? F given P, 4.06% uh, interest rate. Of course, you will not be able to find this 4.06 in the uh, factor tables at the end of your book, but you can use Excel sheet to calculate this value, or you can use the formula and your calculators to find this value. I'm shifting it one period forward. And then now this is at time uh, three years ago, minus three. So I'm adding $5,000 that appeared at that year. Okay. So now for this value, I need to shift it one period forward which means that I'm going to multiply it by F given P, this time 3.42% and one. And now I will add 6,000 to this one, the whole amount. Okay, let's say this amount is the value at time two. So I will write value at time minus two. So on um, for the value at minus two, I'm going to multiply this by F given P, interest rate is 5.23% and one period forward. And I will add this 7,000 to this value. So this is the value at time minus one. And I'm going to multiply this by F given P, 6.03% and one. So this is the amount of this cash flow at time zero. And the second one is uh, pretty easy. I am going to find the present word for this annual equivalent. So A times P given A, 5% and 20. So when I solve this equation for A, I will get the answer. So this is the cash flow diagram as we sketched. And what we do, we move this 4,001 period forward with this interest rate and add 5,000 to it, which will make this value. Then I will move this one, one period forward and add 6,000 at time two years ago. And I will obtain this value. And then I will move it one period forward with this interest rate and add this one to obtain this value and I will move this one, one period forward with this interest rate to obtain this one. Now I'm going to make this value equivalent to the annual equivalent for uh, the cash flows. And using this uh, equality, so 
this is the present word we want to find the annual equivalent so we can do this in two ways actually I can make it equal to a times P given a and the interest rate 5% and 20 and from here I, I just solve for a or you can simply say that this amount is the present value this amount is the present value and if I multiply it by a given P 5% and 20 this will give me the value of a as we do it here and we will obtain this as the solution okay so the idea here is when we have uh, these uh, changing interest rate with time we need to deal with the cash flows one by one we need to move them forward or backward from the given interest rate one at a time 